Hello again. Sorry, I disconnected. I knew I would do that. I don't know why I do that, but I did. So instead of starting over, I decided to just make this part two. Um, I wanted to bring up Charlie Champ. I think it's his last name. Let me see if I can get it without disconnecting. Oh no, I lost it. Ugh. Okay, let's see if I can find it now while you're all watching me try to figure this out. There was a prophecy that he did. Here it is, two noteworthy prophecies on U.S. election. Uh, this is uh, Richard's watch looking for the signs of Jesus' return. Uh, he put down two prophecies that Charlie Shamp put out. Um, the first one is September 26th, was that a prophecy six weeks, six weeks ago, go, blah, 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 that the greatest battle of America will take place in the Supreme Court of the United States. Um, mark this prophetic word, this greatest battle for the heart of America will not be fought at the ballot box during the election, but will happen in the Supreme Court. That's Prophet Charlie Shamp. Okay. Um, justice will be served. President Trump will serve a second term. Everyone that has followed the prophetic words released through this, this ministry already know, knew it was coming down to Pennsylvania and Philadelphia. Uh, the, the fraud and corruption will be exposed. It's over, folks. Okay, that was given... Um, Again, like I said, September 26th. Now, though, this one is really incredible. Listen to this. This was his second prophecy, which was October 22nd. And you're going to be shocked when you see the correlation between this and what's happening now and the book of Revelation. And I heard the Lord say, watch Pennsylvania. Yes, watch and see what I will do. I say to the intercessors, stand and as watch and as pillars of the state and pray Pennsylvania through in the election, for it will be the key that opens the floodgates for the nations to be delivered from destruction. For America hangs in the balance and have placed upon the shoulders of this state the key to victory that will close the door to the enemies that seek to destroy the land of liberty. I say, look and see, I have laid a keystone within you, America. Yes, a tested stone, a white stone, a precious corner stone, a sure foundation where the bell of liberty will ring once again. I will cause a sound to ring out from you, a sound of triumph from my trumpet, for you are my keystone that I have set in the hand of the church to take down the giant in this hour, the giant that seeks to devour this nation, but he will fall and his body will cause the ground to quake in the city of brotherly love. Yes, the ground will quake in the city founded by the Quakers. I shall shake Pennsylvania by my power and corruption will surface for all to see, but the one who believes will be unshakable the one I have set in place will not be moved. Now, isn't that interesting? Now, let's go back to the book of Revelation. And shall we say, and I've been telling you for a long, long time, the church of Philadelphia shall, re shall defeat the synagogue of Satan. Now, who would have thought that it was going to come down to Pennsylvania and the city of Philadelphia? Oh, my goodness, who could have made this up? But God himself, here it's happening right in front of our faces. And I told you, this is what we're going to face. That the church of Philadelphia defeats the synagogue of Satan. Now we're seeing the city of Philadelphia and Pennsylvania becoming the key to opening and closing doors in this fight. And to the angel of the church of Philadelphia, right, these say, things say, he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David, he that openeth and no man shutteth, 
and shutteth, and no man openeth. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. No man can shut it. Because God has opened the door and no man, no corrupt cabal is going to shut this door. For thou hast a little strength. What has been going on here, people? Donald Trump and his, his white hats have been pretending to have little strength. But now we're finding out it was all a trap and has kept my words and has not denied my name. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. They're a bunch of liars and we're finding it all out. Behold, I will make them come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee because thou hast kept the word of my patience. I will keep you from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them which dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly. All that which held that, that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown, the coronavirus. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out, and I'll write upon him the name of my God, the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which comes out of heaven for my God, and I'll write upon him my new name. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. United States is the physical um, manifestation of a spiritual truth. That is New Jerusalem. Okay? We have Old Jerusalem, and we have New Jerusalem both under a covenant to God. And Philadelphia was covenant by the Quakers, Christian people, to God. The land of liberty, the, the place of the Liberty Bell. Oh my gosh, this is incredible. Incredible people, this is incredible. So we're seeing this out playing right out before our very faces, people. So this is what I'm saying is that we are we are breaking free from the the witchcraft this is what those dreams have been been they're they're showing us the church how we've been under a witchcraft we've been under witchcraft and spell and 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 uh, uh we've been under trans uh what's the word i'm looking for uh we've been our minds have been hijacked our bodies have been hijacked we've been enacting satan's reality but not god's reality for so long but those who are controlled by God, by Christ, even though our bodies may seem to be out of control, our minds are clear. And therefore, there is nothing that Satan can do to, to take control of us. Because as long as our minds are stayed on Christ, we can break free from that witchcraft, which is what we're doing. We're breaking free from their witchcraft. We're breaking the world free from their witchcraft. When their eyes will be open, the world's eyes will be open. They'll see the truth. There is no, they haven't got a choice, whether they like it or not, because those who whose minds are stayed on Christ will not allow their minds to be taken over by Satan. Because uh, Christ is our, our, we are alive in Christ. Okay. We're alive in Christ. Just like we all died with the first Adam through the first Adam. We all died but through the through this second Adam. We all come alive. We've all been made alive. Let me see if I can find that first. We've all been made alive. Hold on. Let me put you on pause without disconnecting you. Hold on. Just a second. Okay. First Corinthians. First Corinthians. Same book of the love chapter. Um, first ch chapter 15, verse 12. Now, if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some of you among you that there is no resurrection from the dead? But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ, then is Christ not risen. And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain and your faith is also vain. Yea, we have found false witnesses of God because we have, yea, we are found false witnesses of God because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ whom he raised not up. So, so if so be that the dead raise not. Okay, that's kind of a strange way to putting it. 
Um, in other words, he's saying we're false witnesses if we say that Christ was not raised up from the dead. Um, for if the dead rise not, then Christ, then is not Christ raised. In other words, if the dead are not, we, if God can't raise the dead, if God is incapable of raising the dead, then Christ himself was not raised from the dead. It's what I'm saying before, that because we're alive in Christ, Christ has got to save his bride. He's got to save his people because we are made alive through Christ. And if he's not raised from the dead, then we cannot be raised from the dead. But we will be raised from the dead because he was raised from the dead because we're his body. Just like I was saying with Adam and Eve, Eve, at once Eve had died and she ate that fruit, Adam had no choice because I, one way or the other he had to die because she was a part of him. Okay? Whether he understood that or not, I'm not sure whether Adam really understood that concept fully. But she was a part of him. So if she died, he died. Okay? Because she's a part of him. There would be no reproduction. There would be not a second Eve. God wasn't going to give him another Eve if he couldn't pass the first death with the first Eve. You know what I'm saying? Why would God... It's like, so if Eve died and Adam was alone, there would be no reproduction. And like I said, God would not have given him a second Eve because he first he, he, he failed the first test. And he wasn't going to give him a second Eve to try again. Because she was him. She was a part of him. She came from out of him. And he, Adam had to understand that if she died, he dies one way or the other. And the same thing with Christ. When Christ died, he died for us. Now, now that he died for us and rose again, we who are in him also must like fall, like matter follow. Because if we, if there is no resurrection from the dead, then Christ didn't rise from the dead. Because we are part of him, we must follow suit. What he has done, we have to do the same in order to prove that Christ rose from the dead. Because he, we are him. He, we, we, are, we are now a part of him. We came from inside of him through his blood. We are now a part of his DNA. We are part of him. So therefore, if Christ didn't rise from the dead, we don't rise from the dead. If he's still in the grave, we will not have any resurrection and we are false prophets. But since Christ rose from the dead, we will also in like manner do the same. So what he's doing through the, this tribulation that we're going through is removing every imperfection from our souls through the fears and the, and the mind control and all the things of witchcraft that we've been under in order for us to be able to have that resurrection power that he himself has because we must be equally yoked, which I've told you before. In order for us to be married to Christ, he can only be equally yoked. Christ cannot be unequally yoked. So he's bringing his bride and his church through tribulation in order to tribulate us in order to get rid of all those fears because perfect love casts out fear. And Christ wants us to be in perfect love. He does not want us to have a spirit of fear. He wants us to be in trust of him and love him. Even when we got a gun pointing at our heads thinking this is it, but we still trust him. We, our faith, our trust is in Christ and Christ alone. In my dream, I lost control of my body. I didn't know what I was going to do. But in my mind, I was thinking, Jesus, Jesus, help me, Jesus. What's going on, Jesus? I'm trusting you, Jesus. Why is this happening, Jesus? I'm trusting you, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. That's where my mind was in my dream. Okay? Yay, we have, um, for if the dead raise not, then Christ, then is not Christ raised. For if Christ be not raised, your faith is in vain, you are yet in your sins. But then they that also which fall asleep in Christ are perish. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. But now Christ is risen from the dead and become the first fruit of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, there it is, that's what I'm saying, in Adam we all die, he failed the test, but even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits, afterwards they that are in Christ at his coming. And then cometh the end, when he shall have delivered up the kingdom of God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. For he must reign till he hath put all his enemies under his 
and the last to be destroyed is death for he hath put all things under his feet there's that feet thing the feet chart he's healing us through our feet and what was happening in my dream something was happening to my legs they were changing color they were going brassy color and Jesus has feet of bronze. He has feet of brass. That's what it says. He has feet of brass. And his, his bride will also have feet of brass. He is removing the curses that have bringing us, been bringing us down and, and keeping us under control and mind control and uh, uh, manipulated and witchcraft and all the rest of this stuff. We, they have manipulated and have told us through witchcraftery, but he's breaking us free little by little through this tribulation that we've been going through. And this last bit as well, that now that this, this battle is going to the Supreme Court, but God's going to win because our faith and trust in Christ will stay steady. And he's giving us feet of brass through the process. What? That's what's happening, people. This last stick, this last push which is the Supreme Court, which is going to the head, it's going to the top, it's going to the Supreme Court, perfect love, my last dream's being pink. The pink means it's going to the top, it's going to the Supreme Court, where it's going to be decided, where we get our crown, because our feet are going brass. And he's putting his enemies under his feet when his bride has feet of brass. He's giving us, because we can't, he cannot be unequally yoked. But the tribulation is making, this tribulation that we're going through is removing the fear, the fears that we've been under, the fears that we've been controlled by. All these years, for centuries and thousands of years, we've been controlled by fear. And now we've been, we're being processed and we must be getting pretty, pretty close to that, that perfection that the Lord is re requiring from his bride in order to be equally yoked with his bride. What? This is amazing stuff, people. So I think that's all I want to say in this video. So I, I would have had just one video, except for the fact that I accidentally disconnected, which um, my, I'm not so techie. I said, there's that thing. That's all I wanted, wanted to say on this. But look it up for yourself. Oh, let me just get, pull it up again. That was um, the prophecy. I found this under Richard's watch, Richard's, as an apostrophe s watch w a t c h looking for the signs of jesus and the prophecies are charlie champ and uh, yeah so look that up and uh we are living some pro prophetic times i'll probably be on tomorrow i guess the lord's gonna give me some wild dreams lately and and particularly um they seem to be coming a little bit more uh quickly because I guess we're going through so much and we really need the encouragement. Uh, the Lord is not going to abandon his bride because he we've already been made alive. There's nothing that Satan can do to kill us, to kill the bride, because we've been made alive already. We've already been made alive. Through, through the first Adam, we all died. Through the second Adam, we've all been made alive. And in the, like I said, we're still going back to that movie, um, Forrest saying to Beatrice, if you die, I die. If you die, I die. And that's not going to happen because Christ already died. <laughs> Think about it. He already died. So since he already died, there's no way that we can die because now we are alive through Christ. Since he can never be killed, neither can we. Okay? So we've got to realize that that's what we're going through right now. We're going through the process of getting rid of all our fears. And they have to come to the surface. Don't be afraid. I'm come. Oh, oh, before I forget. One more thing. My sister had some dreams. Um... Oh, she had a dream about um, Trudeau. This is my sister who, in my dreams, represents the church of, the faith church, the church of uh, Sardis? No, 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 church of um, uh, Thyatira, the works church. And she, so she's green. She's right there across the heart, the heart there. Let me see if I can find her dream quickly for you. Um, the one about Trudeau. Let's see if I can find it quickly. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. I should probably should put you on hold because I've got all these. Oh, I've got all these. Hold on, what's going on here? Messages from BitChute. 
drive me crazy. Oh, more, more. Every time I turn around, there's more and more. It keeps interfering. Stop already! Every time I'm trying to get to this this email, and I'll oh, I probably should put you on hold because or pause. Let me see if I can do that. I'm gonna have to put you on pause because these these pop ups keep happening since I've got this. I'm disconnected from. Um, hold on just a second. Okay, <laughs> so much confusion. Okay, I found the, her her email here. Um, she said she saw my last video. Um, she said she's been looking out for me, and that's wonderful. Watch, I need her, her looking out for me. Um, oh here, here, oh this part I want to get to was the flying saucer and the Trudeau thing. Um. Uh, sorry about this. I'm trying to find it where it is here. Oh, okay. She says, um, I was spoken to by God who told me to say something specific to the a angel Michael. Then he said to me that as long as I was tight, trying, trying, God would, would not judge me. I was told to never give up. After that, I was sent to rebuke a flying saucer by saying, I rebuke you in Jesus name. After that, it disappeared. The dream went on, but I found myself in a hallway leading to your door. And there were all, all these objectified spirits crowding the pathway to your door. Well, that's interesting. All these objectified spirits crowding the pathway to your door. So my door. I went to you to wake you up and to see if you were all right. When I woke up, I knew that I was supposed to assist you spiritually. I wrote, we are to watch out for each other. We are at war. It's sneaky. That's the spirit of it. I referenced John 6, 63. Um, okay. That's why I started watching your videos and calling you more frequently. We are a team of spiritual warriors. As far as Trudeau is, Trudeau is concerned, all I remembered of that dream is that he and his children came, came children in, in parentheses, came into my house and I opened the door to call out to God and said, Father, rebuke this abomination and his seed and get them out of my house. I claimed my legal authority in Christ and my legal citizenship in New Jerusalem for God to enforce his will. I don't know where, when, or what the result of that will be, but God will manifest it in his own appoint, appointed will and in his own appointed time. Love you. So she wrote that about Trudeau and she had this she, moment where she had to rebuke his abominations, his children and his abominations. Um... I think that's all I wanted to say. I think that was the last of the things I wanted to say. She said she had another dream. I'm trying to remember what it was now. She just told me she had another dream. Oh, she saw, uh, she saw, this is what happened. She called me just um, a um, couple hours ago. And she told me that she had seen a vision because she's been praying about the situation in the United States and what's going on. And she decided to keep praying until she got, an answer from the Lord in one way or the other. And she said as she was, she prayed for, I think she's prayed for a couple hours in the spirit and in tongues. And she got a vision. She saw a vision of an angel, a warrior angel holding a double edged sword. And he was bronze color. The sword was bronze color. And the, the angel was a bronze color. She said everything about this angel was bronze. Um, and so, uh, to me, it brings back the color of bronze or brass, or feet of brass, um, so that he's strengthening us uh, for this last battle, which has to do with um, justice and getting our, uh, removing the clay of our feet of clay and changing them to feet of bronze. Um, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Now, before I finish that, I am just go back to the book of Revelation and just look, read that passage about Christ and his feet of bronze. Um, 
it said his feet of bronze here. Uh, da, 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 da. So John's in his vision, he's seeing Jesus, and he's in Revelation 1, 12. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me, and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one stood, uh, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed in white garments down to the foot, and a girt about the paps with a golden girdle. His head and his hair were like white, white like wool, and white as snow, and his eyes were a flame of fire. And his feet were like unto fine brass, as if they if they burned in a furnace and his voice is the sound of many waters. So that's what my legs look like. They look like they were burning, but they were a brassy color, like a bronzy, brassy, not bronze. They were brass, got a brighter color. Um, so that's what I was seeing in my, my dreams that my legs had turned to a brassy color. Um, also let's go to the book of revelation chapter 10, looking at the, the angel who has the scroll and he's the he's the seventh day angel the seventh church angel he's the church uh the laodicean church the ones that bring that's bringing in the harvest that has the rainbow around his head and his feet are also mentioned because they're standing between the sea and the on the land and the sea and uh, i think his legs i'm just check, check check to see i have a feeling that his legs were also pillars of fire yes his feet are as pillars of fire that's revelation 10 1 and i saw another saw another angel come down from heaven clothed with a cloud and the angel uh, rainbow was on his head and his face was like the sun and his feet are, are as pillars of fire so that's interesting i think that's what we're coming to we're coming to that place where um we are losing our feet of clay for those who are in christ jesus because like i said christ must be equally yoked and so therefore we have to be in his full strength. We have to be in the strength of Christ and in his resurrection power. So interesting, wonderful times we're living in. So I think that's all I'm going to say. If you have not given your life to Jesus Christ, please do so while there's still time. We're certainly in the last days. And if you have been woken up, give your life to Jesus, give your heart to Jesus. And at the first opportunity, be baptized. Okay. Find someone who can baptize you in a river, lake, tub, stream, bath, hot tub, anywhere you, you can find a place that you can be immersed in the name of Jesus Christ um, for the remission of your sin and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So that's all I'm going to say and God bless and I'll talk to you later.